This is the second time, people. I am disappointed in myself that I haven't been thinking about this anime. I'm sorry. It's just there's so much going on. And despite this being Yoko Taro, my f most favorite game writer of all time's work, it's not the most interesting. I'm sorry. It's not. I'm not saying it's bad. It's generic. I'll give you that. But it's not bad. It's just that there's so many others out there that are really, really good. And this just appears, you know, so I just forget about it in the, in the wave of fall anime. And that's on me. That is on me. You know, so starting from today and onward, I will try to review every thing I can because it's just a lot for me right now. I know I'm only I'm not making many videos as I used to. I know, I know. But still, it's no excuse for me. No excuse. But this is getting interesting as the story unveils. And before I mention more, do you know this game is season two? Yep. It's already slated for season two. <laughs> like wow. An anime that no one's talking about. I mean, no one's talking about this anime. Not even people who are like the Dragon Year or the Taro Versus. No one's really talking about this anime. Not even them. But it's getting a season two. <laughs> I'm not mad or anything. It's just, I wish um, people who are fans of the old Taro would talk about it more. But then again, I'm not talking about it either much. Now, am I? Something about this that's just makes his way under the radar and deep at the bottom of the trenches of the ocean. And uh, it can't be helped, I guess. But anyways, let's get on with episodes three and four. Three was very emotional, probably the best episode out of the four that I've aired so far. Dealing, because it's very focused, you know, some of the best episodes are the ones that are always focused. You don't need many scenes or things going on. It just needs a, a constant plot towards it to make it interesting. You don't even need, need many characters. It can be like two or three characters and them talking and discussing something and just going through the emotions of an event. And that's exactly what happened in episode three. Garo's best friend, Aki Su, we thought he was going to stay a bit longer, but no. He dies in episode three. Like, wow. And the title is called The Fighters of Friends. And we see this, their personalities from the past and to the present of how they see each other. Goro sees Aksu as a friend that will never betray him. And even though he plays around a lot, he is very loyal. And Aksu sees Goro as maybe a whiny type, a loner, but he's very honest. And he knows that the best people in the world are those who don't fight for themselves but fight for other people and that's exactly what he saw in Goro. You know, these two became friends who grew up in both miserable ways. Goro because he had a dude remained fun of his parents which caused everyone to be afraid of him, be isolated, be a loner and it seems like Akisu in a very brilliant way they did this is telling his backstory through his power. That was very interesting. Uh, it's very often where you tell a good interest someone's backstory about having going through a back a flashback, but instead you see it through their power. A personification of their power in a way. You see who they are. You know, I use power is when he can call back events that he's been through by remembering them to the T. He can bring those events back. Like, when he saw his father shoot someone, or his mom try to stab him, or see his mom try to hang herself and stuff. He was using that as a weapon, which is pretty interesting. You know, pretty interesting. Imagine using a power where you use callback events that you witnessed in your past and see and use them as a weapon. That's very, very interesting. I don't think I've seen anyone do that before. You know, that's a very unique kind of power. You no, know, not only that, you can also rewind 
um, what a person does over five seconds. And he also has the ability to see into the future. And he saw all kinds of possibilities. But understanding Goro's power, which is due to karma, um, he used his power, it bites him in the butt, in a way. When he brought back the girl, Hanukkah, he became, his family became ridden and bullied and stuff and trash everywhere. But he seems not to care because he already lived in a miserable existence before he was even caught up in his god game. So there's that. So he did not care at all what happens to him. Like, okay. That's it. So he's just saying this with strides. But what did hurt him was him having to kill his friend. And I love how they did this. They did this where the friend knew what he had to do. Akisu knew multiple futures. Like, he, he pulled the freaking um, Doctor Strange, in a way. He knew multiple outcomes. And he only knew one outcome that was decent. Not good. Decent. <laughs> Think about it. Decent. <laughs> Damn. You already know what's about to happen. So, and this is the only way. The only way was for to give Goro that push to fight in this game and to make sure to get a decent outcome by killing his best friend. So, in the end, Akishu was loyal to the very end. He never betrayed Goro. He knew that he needed to do this so Goro can win. If he know Goro can win, Goro would always beat him in games, as he say. So, that episode was really good stuff. And episode two, episode two was interesting. He started introducing more characters, three new characters, in a way, to link it, the, the, the occult researcher and the little angel, in a way. In this one, Goro and Hanako are working together to hunt down the little angel, but two new characters intervene as well, who seem to be candidates. You can tell they're candidates because they have, you know... <laughs> They're personalized. You know, everyone else in this show are just background noise. Like I said, this is definitely a Future Diaries meets Danganronpa mixed here, where all the characters that don't matter are just background noise. You know, you, you don't see them. They have no face. You don't care about them. <laughs> They're just the same color. Then for the ones that do matter, have these features, his personality and all that to them. Like, wow. He really took out a Dr. Rampa for this one. And of course, Future Diaries with the smartphones. And speaking of that, they actually referenced Super um, Future Diaries in Episode 3, where um, Goro tripped over a soccer ball. He says, only oh, he could see um, the future in the five seconds, which was Yuki's power to see the future in his five seconds. So, Future Diary reference. You now know Yoko Taro just like, I saw Future Diaries, and I'm like, I want to do that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all there is to it. Uh, but anyways, the, it seems like the plot is raveling up, you know. You got the science girl, who seems to be a loner but doesn't mind it, who just wanted to have someone tag along to uh, do this research of cults magic science stuff she was into, then you have the delinquent, who seems to be not the bad guy, but appears off because of his brash personality, because they can't help that. But the real bad guy seems to be this little angel. Very intriguing. And I'm glad that episode 3 happened, so episode 4 could happen. And I mean by that is, you see now how active um... How active Goro is now in the series. And at first, he would just try to do anything he can to avoid conflict, avoid this mess. But now he knows he's stuck in it. His friend died so he could live on and to make a better future. So he's doing this for the sake of his friend. He wants to see this outcome that his friend saw. So because of that, he's he's going to do whatever he can to do it, even though he can't do much. So which I do like. He's doing better than freaking Yuki from Future Diaries. Yuki from Future Diaries is always, you know, in his shell. But then again, that happened because of you know and stuff. And I want to talk about that, you know, this little brush off here. Um, people were complaining how Yuki was such a wimp in Future Diaries. That's because you know went back in time and made him a wimp. 
because in the original timeline, Yuki was more of the field man, but you you know what protect him, so she made him feel like he had no choice but to depend on her, no matter what. Same thing happened in Modoka Magica, where Monica was the one who was really good with being a magical girl, and Homura, Homura kept going back in time so much to the point where she became a professional and wanted to make Monica to be completely dependable on her, so she wanted to become a magical girl. Just that, that's all I'm saying. At least with this one, Goro had no one to depend on, so he has to become independent on himself. You know, he he has no best friend, he has no love interest, anyone looking out for him anymore. Hey, the person he's working with probably wants to cut his head off just as much as the next guy, so he has to rely on himself and his little pixie, Lol, who's going through her own little identity crisis because all she knows is the rules of the game and she's created by his power. So, she doesn't have much of a true meaningful existence besides helping him out win his game. And that's probably all she's focused on. Who knows what happens if they win the game or lose the game. Will she cease to exist? Go through another playing dimension? Who knows? I bet she's trying not to think about that much because it kind of be... I'd be scary to think about something like that. Like, is this my existence? Is this all I am? So, if this dude loses... What becomes of me? <laughs> what becomes of everything, of other people that are like me? Are there others out there who are like me? It, that's so scary thinking when you actually think about that stuff. So you just focus on the goal and make sure everything is just right. <laughs> but yeah, I am sorry for skipping on a series for the past two weeks. I will do my best to find out what day this airs and see when I can review it. Yes, this is Yoko Taro's stuff. And it seems like every time Yoko Taro wants to do something, they just let him do it. This guy probably has the most freedom to do whatever he wants in any director I've ever seen in my life. Just think about it. How many directors do you know, that do, video game directors, can say, I'm going to do a stage play. I'm going to do a little um, concert. I want to do a video game. I want to do a mobile game. I want to do an anime. I want to do a manga. It's just, just out of nowhere. I want to do that and just let him do it, you know. Um, uh, let's see where this goes. I'm mean, I'm really invested, even more than ever now. I'm more motivated since I saw these last two episodes go with this. And since this is getting a season two already. <laughs> so, on for the ride. So anyway, so I got your video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, of course. Hit that bell icon. This has been Minecraft on Madden Day. Sign out.